Ever since the first telescope was invented, and we learned there are other worlds out there, people have dreamed of going to them. Of course, we now know that Mars is really the only other planet in the solar system you'd actually want to set foot on. But what would it take to set up a human colony on Mars, and when's it likely to happen? It's certainly easy to imagine ourselves living and working on Mars. It has no oceans or life, but in many ways, it's like Earth, like a desert area. We have the largest mountain in the solar system, there's the largest canyon in the solar system, and probably the most severe dust storms. And NASA's been given the go-ahead to do for Mars what they did for the Moon 40 years ago. Today I announce a new plan to explore space and extend a human presence across our solar system. We conquered the moon in less than a decade with 1960s technology, driven by the America-Soviet space race. But the moon is a one-week trip. A journey to Mars will take years. That's because it's a half-year flight there when Mars and Earth are closest, at least a one-year wait for our planets to get close again, and half a year back. For a stay that long, astronauts won't be able to take everything they'll need like they did for the moon. They're going to have to do something much, much, much more difficult. One of the better ideas is to figure out what's going to be there when we get there and how to use it, kind of live off the land kind of strategy. For example, the atmosphere of Mars is CO2, 95%. And CO2, notably, has O in it. So if you want some oxygen, you have it there. All you have to do is separate the C from the O2, and you can breathe it. That takes a little bit of power. So we'll have to set up manufacturing facilities on Mars, extracting oxygen from carbon dioxide. Water supplies are also too heavy to take from Earth. But scientists believe Mars has its own H2O frozen in permafrost. The astronauts could simply melt it. If we can't get water easily from the permafrost, if it's a little bit too deep, well, we can take some hydrogen with us. Then we take this hydrogen, combine it with the O2 that we've made, and we have water. Even food will have to be grown in inflatable greenhouses on Mars. These plants around us here are breathing CO2. And CO2, there's plenty of it there. They've done some experiments to, and have noticed that plant, some types of plants can grow under the low pressure CO2 atmospheres of Mars. But getting people to Mars and setting up a village there is still only part of the challenge. Australian space scientist Rod Boswell. Yes, there's no doubt that you could get people to Mars. So whether you get them back again is, is a debatable point. The problem is taking the huge amount of fuel for the trip home. It would be just unthinkable. You have to loft that off the Earth. So there'd be too many tonnes. You just couldn't do it, I don't think. Would we dare send the astronauts on a one-way journey, like the pioneers of old? Speaking to a lot of astronauts, they would certainly volunteer. A lot of people would volunteer for a one-way trip. People volunteer for one-way trips to Everest. Charlie thinks there might be the odd ethical problem with one-way trips these days. I think the most plausible plans are to make fuel on Mars. And the first thing you do is set a ro send a robotic mission to set up the equipment and the tanks to do this. And then uh, you get, well, what do you need? You need the hydrogen and oxygen, and they're already there on Mars. Yet another challenge will be astronaut health. Lower gravity causes muscles and bones to wither, so astronauts must exercise a lot. In space, it's zero G. And on Mars, the gravity is only 38% of Earth's. Artificial gravity from a rotating space station might give astronauts much needed stints in 1G conditions. But a bigger problem will be deadly space radiation. Showers of high-speed particles emanating from space and the sun don't reach us on Earth because we're protected by our planet's magnetic field. As you get higher and higher above the Earth, you get outside the magnetic field of the Earth. And if you're going to Mars, you're definitely going to be outside the magnetic field of the Earth. And therefore, you don't get this magnetic shielding that you would have if you stayed close to the Earth. Mars doesn't have a molten core to produce a magnetic field, and so there is no magnetic field to protect us. We'll have to build shielding for the astronauts on Mars to stop the high-speed particles crashing through their bodies and causing cancer. The question you've got to ask is, is it all just too hard? It'd be much cheaper to forget humans and only send robots to Mars. But Charlie's not convinced. 
for example, one of the most interesting places on Mars are on other on this cliff faces. So how do you get a robot that has wheels onto a cliff face? Well, a human can, can walk or kind of abseil down the side of a cliff, not easily, but you can do it. But robots' uh, technology to do that is very difficult. Charlie believes we will be living on Mars, and it may be sooner than you think. Well, plans now are to go build this moon base uh, 2020, so about 13 years from now, and uh, 10 years later, maybe onto Mars. So 2030, 2040 is probably the time scale which is doable. What we need is another space race. I think a lot of our efforts to go to outer space also depend on our tribalism here. We said, okay, I'm gonna get there first. No, I'm gonna get there first. And then two nations start competing and then boom, all of a sudden somebody does it. As long as we're aggressive and antagonistic towards our neighbors, we'll, <laughs> we'll reach out for the stars. <laughs>